Red 2 standing by, all for lit and in the green, welcome back to Metroid Prime. Before I get into everything, I'm going to wander around the area for a bit and let us listen to the music. You might recognise it. Music in the Talon Overworld is a remix of Brinstar from the original Metroid, a very nice homage to where everything started out. Now you've probably noticed that we have a few doors we can go through. There's one up here which I will come back to later once we have a certain piece of equipment. There is one we found wandering around here. Let's see if I can find it again. This should take us Again, somewhere we can't go. We can't quite fit under there. And as for here, we're not going to be able to get too far. But we can at least put the scan visor to work. So, here's one of our first creatures on Talon 4, the Blast Cap. Volatile chemicals within this weed's toxic fungal cap may explode if agitated. The poisonous flesh of the blast cap helps keep it from being eaten. It also detonates its, its fungal cap when it senses even slight contact. There we go. So, let's see, we should be able to proceed if we have certain items. We can't fit under there and we lost our morph ball. Now, Commentary is going to be a bit different, and for a few episodes, I'm not going to be that rusty in all fairness, which is kind of a shame. I had hoped for this to be rusty, but my hard drive on which I had everything stored just packed up for no apparent reason other than it wanted to. Now, I didn't really have any backups, which is a bit of a problem, because normally I'm the sort of person who believes that technology will only go wrong when there's a Y in the day, and that it's about as useful as a plastic watch because of that. It's certainly very helpful for doing things like this, but it's not always helpful for certain things. Everything seems to wear out really quickly. I'd only had that hard drive less than a year. But it is what it is. We shall make the most of it and we shall continue recording. Anyway, don't forget to scan Samus's gunship. Hunter class gunship registered to Samus Aran. You can return to your ship to recharge energy, reload weapons, and save progress in the game. 
So we've seen a couple of doors through which we can go, and we can actually wind up going through some doorways up there. Now, if we stick the landing onto the ship and do some fancy tricks that speedrunners might know, we can get up there. There's an enemy we can scan through there, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet because it's better to go back there once we've recovered our missile launcher. Let's proceed on through the only door we can really enter. And this is a beetle, a burrowing insect with a resilient carapace. It's extremely aggressive. Insect's massive mouth enables it to tunnel through solid rock at high speeds. Above ground, beetles can cover short distances rapidly. They attack anything that moves near their lair. Push them back with some shots from your power beam. They're fairly easy to handle in all fairness. And we'll move on into the Talon Canyon and don't forget to scan these things. These are sap sacs. Chemical reaction within sac produces violent explosion when agitated. Because of its irresistible odour and sweet nectar, the sap sack was nearly eaten out of existence. The evolution of an explosive chemical sack saved it. Now only brave or ingenious creatures dare to devour it. So we step back, put a few rounds in, and it blows up. Not the best self-protection mechanism. You'll find blast caps around here as well. There is a door we can enter in the upper part of the canyon to which I shall now head. And you might be familiar with this, this is a zoomer. Anchors itself to walls and other surfaces. Avoid contact with spikes. A basic nerve center located directly above the zoomer's mandibles detects nutrients. Sharp spines protect it from casual predators, but the lack of a reinforced carapace makes the zoomer vulnerable to any indirect attacks. Zoomers and their relative gamers appear in quite a few Metroid games. Gamers appear are the ones that are said to appear in uh, Metroid, Zero Mission, and Super Metroid. Speaking of, here is the gamer, wall crawling mollusk. Gamer, Gamer, not sure. Wall crawling mollusk with retractable spikes. The Gema is an evolutionary offshoot of the Zuma family. When threatened, it extends lethal spikes and retracts its head deep into its armoured carapace. Fire a few shots to make it stop in its tracks so we can proceed safely. Make our way through this waterfall and we will encounter a plant-based enemy known as the Blood Flower. Whoops. How did I not get hurt there? Okay, it just randomly exploded. So the blood flower, able to eject toxic spores. Toxins are poisonous even to the blood flower itself. Three mouth nodules protrude from the stalk beneath the flower, each with a rudimentary brain cluster and the ability to spew toxic fumes at anything within a 5 meter radius. The spores ejected from the stigma at the center of the flower are sufficient to kill the, this creature if they explode in its vicinity. You basically have to shoot its little venom back at it. And that will wind up killing it. Down here we have the Tangleweed. Plant life with basic sentience. Retracts into ground if threatened. Tangleweeds are only dangerous to small organisms. They are covered in tiny barbs designed to trap potential meals. Tangleweeds lack the strength to do anything more than hinder larger life forms, as we shall see. They will slow us down, but we can move on safely. Now, this is a good opportunity to grab this. This is a blast shield on the door blocking access. Analysis indicates that the blast shield is invulnerable to beam weapons. Explosive weapons may damage it. So, as we can see, door cannot be opened with that weapon. We can also have our shots bounce back onto us and we'll take no damage, which is pretty nifty. So, fire above Tangleweeds and they'll drop back down. Uh, that's the one I want. Stick our landings. Repel the beetles. 
and this is the path we will need to take through Talon Canyon. Now, if I'm careful, there's a zoom that moves along. I can... There we are! A perfect demonstration of the Sapsack's defensive capabilities. We can blow up that zoomer for no other reason than I want to. So, we're heading off to the Chozo Ruins. Samus was raised by the Chozo, as we well know, and they have established a number of civilizations across the galaxy. Worth noting that these elevators tend to be used as loading zones. So, the Chozo Ruins will be where we grab a fair bit of our equipment back, as we can see here. So, if we pay attention to these, we have the option to guide us on, press the Z button, and, and it will show us the rough idea of where we need to go on our map. There's also a world map that will show us where we are in the broader scheme of things. Use the C stick to move around. So, there's a nice little demonstration of the Talon 4 map. So, even if we can go through there, we'll need missiles. That's what those grey doors are, by the way. You'll see that we can open doors with the standard beam, the wave beam, the ice beam, the plasma beam, and missiles. And we have quite a few beetles around the place. Oh, I missed this on my first time through. So this is Chozo Law. Always pay attention to those. Good thing I did actually come back again because I completely missed that. How oblivious. Granted, I probably did have the uh, brightness on the TV down a bit low. Anyway, the history of the Chozo stretches back into ancient times. So far into the fog of the past that we know not where our ancestors came from. One thing is clear, however, the Chozo who colonized Talon 4 made a conscious choice to eschew a civilization of advanced technology. They chose to live in harmony with nature, guided by the providence of the universe. As this city grows, we plan to honor them with written tributes, carvings etched in stone to remind us always of their legacy. Very nice indeed. So we'll find Chozo lore as well as pirate data around the place. Make sure to scan them and gather information. Also, if you hear a sort of droning noise, a pickup is nearby. These will generally be missile expansions. Some will be energy tanks. Pay attention, grab them where you can. So, with those threats out of the way, we cannot go through here because we do not have the missiles. We can go through a doorway just to our left down there, but we can explore a little bit as well. If we head up here, we'll find a path that we cannot traverse without our morph ball. We will also see a tree bridge. And, if I'm correct, this is a War Wasp Hive. Primary War Wasp dwelling, only vulnerable to heavy weaponry. War Wasps build their homes over existing crevices using whatever materials are close at hand. They carry building fragments back to the construction site with their forelegs and glue them into place with adhesives secreted from their abdomens. So that little droning noise meant that there was a pickup nearby. Now we can't scan the war wasps just yet. We'll get to do that later on. Let's move through these tunnels and we'll meet scarabs. Uh, which one wants to be the scan one? 
So, scarabs, exploding parasites that can embed their bodies in solid rock. Scarabs think nothing of sacrificing themselves for the safety of their swarm. When a hostile life form is sighted, they block its progress by embedding themselves in floors and walls. Embedded scarabs violently self-destruct when threatened. So use your aiming reticule to pick them off. They can often leave behind large clusters of pickups. And as we go through here, this is basically the exposition episode. You get used to scanning a lot of new enemies. This is the Ion, immobile organisms entirely composed of ocular tissue. Capable of launching sustained energy beams when active, the Ion is sensitive to light and will close shut if a bright flash ignites nearby. So, a bolt from our charge beam will cause them to close off for a little while. and allow us to proceed. We got shot in the back of the head by that one on the ceiling. Not nice. So we have some pickups here and we should be able to scan war wasps. And beetles and some chozo lore. Thankfully we can do this peacefully. So Many long years have passed since we Chozo first took root in this land. The passage of time has always been a source of fascination to us. It is the belief of many Chozo sages that the truths of the universe hide within the tumbling currents of time's flow. Even as we search for answers there, however, we find illumination in other unexpected places. We know not how the ability has come to us, but recently, many Chozo have begun to sense things beyond the realm of ordinary perception. Strange sights and inexplicable sensations flood our minds, filling us with visions of past and future. We take this growing ability to be a sign of our burgeoning harmonization with the infinite. Perhaps, finally, the universe's secrets are becoming known to us. So, up here, by the way, is a missile expansion. Which just explains how to get, get it. So, sandstone. Sandstone? can be destroyed by morph ball bombs, which we don't have yet. We will get them in due course. Aha! There are our regular war wasps, airborne insect equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shearing steel. The war wasp rarely strays far from its hive unless it is pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks with no regard for its own survival, dive bombing its enemy with its stinger extended. Fast working toxins from the stinger can incapacitate most small organisms. So let's move on. We'll be running into more scarabs. There is one, one important thing I want to do for our journey making landfall. I'll wrap it up after what is essentially the tutorial boss fight. Did the scarab land on my head? Plenty of the little blighters. So there's a standard war wasp pipe. Now pay attention to the uh, little meters, the little gauge at the uh, at the upper left, that will tell us where enemies are. This will be very important. So we have no pickups there. Now let's see. We saw this on the frigate Orpheon. This is a plasmite. Small insect capable of storing and releasing thermal energy. Plasmites are attracted to sources of heat, thriving on the energy present there. They emit light when hunting, and will expel small bursts of thermal energy when threatened. Whoops, let go of that a little quickly. Now you'll note... Ah yes, we can scan this. This is our large energy, replenishing 20 units of energy. Standard issue, really? You'll note that the water looks a bit green. 
The water is poisonous and that bar I mentioned at the left of our screen that has warning flashing there, that will tell us when we're close to something that can damage us. Speaking of, we're just about ready to go to our first boss fight. Jump up here, and over there, we can see an elevated bridge and... That's not telling us that it's the missile launcher. But... You know how I mentioned the radar? Get ready to use it. We get some really, really awesome music that isn't used very often throughout the game. This is used for mechanical mini-bosses. This is the Hive Mecha, security unit programmed to work with predatory hive dwellers. A design flaw makes the shielding on Hive Mecha weak around their access ports. These units are second generation combat drones able to interface with organic units on a higher level. They train, shelter and work with hive dwelling predators. Unarmed, they rely on their hive beasts to handle any threats. That's not what I'm trying to get. Now, we need to get our scan visor out and wait for those to stop. Trying to scan them is a minor nightmare. Thankfully I haven't been hit yet, but these are Ram War Wasps. 15 damage, jeez, that's a lot. Ugh. There we go. The Ram War Wasp. Airborne Predator circles its prey and then strikes. The War Wasps are the only species on Talon 4 to evolve a true hive mind. Nesting in damp dark places, ram war wasps emerge in small groups when threatened and circle their enemy at high speeds, disorienting it. Striking from all sides as a single intelligence, they can fell huge organisms. So pay attention to that radar and gun them down. I'm already off to a bad start. Don't land in the water because it's dangerous. So, watch that radar. And fire away! Good, I got a couple of them already. Patience is, the, is a virtue. It's a tough fight, but if you pay attention to your radar... And there we are. We have shut down the Hive Maker. I did a little better than last time, which is unsurprising, but if you're not careful and you don't pay attention to that radar, that thing can kill you. It really makes you pay attention to all the perks of playing in 3D. So there is our missile launcher. If we aim down here, we can destroy that and grab our first energy tank. We don't get a bonus for scanning these or missile expansions. We also can't proceed from here because we need the Morph Ball, which we don't have. But... There we are, we've got a convenient way out now. Stick the landing and we'll head back. But I think this is as good a spot to call it for this particular episode, since we've made major progress. Thank you very much for joining me. Until next time, this is Red 2 returning to base.